Ever since I got my 2012 Goldwing, I've been waiting for somebody to come out with a set of driving lights that actually matches the shape of this lower cowl. Well, SoCal Moto Gear has finally done it. They've got these super new rectangular LED driving lights that not only contain a high powered driving light, but you also get a LED daytime running light and they can be hooked to your turn signals so that that works with your turn signals as well. It's very cool. Now this kit will fit any 2012 or greater Goldwing. It'll also fit your F6B or even the new Honda Valkyrie. I don't think there's any other kit out there that has all the features this has. It's very nice. I'm going to show you how to install it today on Cruise Man's Garage. Your rectangular fog light kit comes with everything you need for plug and play installation on a 2006 to 2017 Goldwing. If you're installing on an F6B, you will require an F6B1A adapter. Also, if you're installing on a 2006 to 2010 Goldwing, you would need to replace your lower cowl with one that has rectangular cutouts. The tools needed for this job are a 5mm Allen wrench, an 8mm and 10mm socket, a ratchet or a socket driver, a Phillips screwdriver, a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel, and a small flat file. The first step is to disconnect your Goldwing battery just to be safe. On a 2012 or above model, you need to open your saddlebag to remove the left side cover. You don't have to do that on the earlier models. And you'll notice my seat is removed. Uh, I'm doing some other things, so you don't have to take your seat off to do this. Just remove that left side cover so that you can get access to the battery. And then, you know, using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the black, the negative, uh, the ground on your battery and make sure you pull the ground wire up so that it is not touching the battery and this will disconnect the battery so we don't have to worry about a current. The next step is to remove the front lower cowl. This is the plastic piece that sits in front of your engine. It's right behind the front fender. There are six five millimeter hex bolts that hold this in place. You see the lower one first I showed you and there's also four across the top. Now you can only see three of them here because the fender's in the way but you'll need to remove all of those using a five millimeter Allen wrench. There are also two plastic uh, push pin rivets that you basically just pull these out using your fingers. They'll just pop right out and they kind of a, hold two plastic pieces together but they have to be removed or have to be released uh, before you can remove the cowl. Now as you remove these bolts, make sure you keep note of which ones go where because there are two different sizes. Very important when you go to put this back together. You'll need to remove the electrical tape that is wrapping the two electrical connectors. These are for your driving lights and you'll find these underneath the cowl. So go ahead and remove that electrical tape now. After you've removed the tape, you can now remove the plastic plug in the end of each of these connectors. With the cowl removed, you can see the three locations that we use to mount the brackets that will be used to eventually mount the fog lights. Using an 8mm socket, you need to remove the two bolts that hold the plastic guard in place. It's a good idea to save these bolts just in case you ever decide later to remove the fog lights. Locate the right mounting bracket. It will have an R stamped on the back. You can now install the adjusting screw and spring as shown to the front of the bracket. Use the two long machine screws and springs to do this. Install the large flange inserts into the back of the rubber grommets on the mounting bracket as shown. In the mounting hardware, you'll notice there are two sizes of M6 flange bolts. The longer bolts are used for the left side, the shorter for the right side. 
Using one of those shorter flange bolts and a 2mm spacer, go ahead and insert the side mounting bolt and use a 4mm spacer behind it and then mount it to the front of the bike or front of the engine as shown. And you want to tighten it but not completely tight. Before installing the other two shorter flange bolts, go ahead and reposition the plastic guard behind the bracket as shown. When installing on the right side, don't forget to use the shorter of the two flange bolts and uh, use the 2 millimeter spacer just behind the head of the bolt. And you can go ahead and insert these and then tighten them down. Now we're ready to install the right side fog lamp. Look for the lamp with the R stamped in the back of the mounting plate. Install the smaller flange inserts into the back of the rubber grommets on the rear of the mounting plate. Now we're ready to install the fog lamp on the mounting bracket. Make sure that you have the mounting plate in front of the spring as shown on the bottom right. Use two of the smaller Phillips machine screws and a flat washer to secure the fog light to the mounting bracket. Connect the gray electrical connector. The process of installing the left hand fog lamp is virtually identical to what we did on the right side. The main difference in the left and right side is the hardware we're going to use. We're going to use the long M6 flange bolts. We're going to use the 20 millimeter and 16 millimeter spacers and three of the two millimeter spacers. On the side bolt, we're going to use a long flange bolt with a two millimeter spacer. And on the back side, we're going to use a 20 millimeter spacer. Then go ahead and insert this onto the front of the engine as shown. You might have to move some of those cables out of the way to get the uh, bolt to go in. The two remaining bolts use the 16 millimeter spacers in between the bracket and the plastic guard as shown. The left fog lamp attaches to the mounting bracket just like it did on the other side. You're going to put the mounting plate in position, use the two smaller Phillips machine screws with flat washers uh, to attach it and secure it to the mounting bracket. And now we're ready to install the OEM style switch that comes with the kit. The switch will install next to the hazard button as shown in this picture. Let's go ahead and remove the left hand trim piece from the shelter. Now on an earlier model Goldwing, this process will be a little different. Then we need to remove the two five millimeter bolts that hold the radio control unit in place. And then by pushing in from the outside, you can release this radio unit and kind of pull it out. It's attached by wire, so it won't come completely free. Next, remove the cable stay. It's just a Phillips screw. Go ahead and remove that and then you can pry open the back and there's some little slots and if you use a flathead screwdriver you can pry off uh, that back piece comes off as shown. 
Now, by moving the cables out of the way, you can, you can see where there's two little Phillips screws that hold that, I call it a blank in place. It just is a kind of a placeholder for a switch. You remove those two screws, the blank will come out, and then you simply insert the OEM style switch in its place and use those same two Phillips screws uh, to hold it in place. Next, you're going to want to locate the connector for the driving lights as shown here. Now it may be kind of buried down inside the shelter. It's inside of a group or a harness of other wires sometimes and you'll find that connector. And this is what you're going to connect the wiring harness to. Now the wiring harness is part of what is connected to the relay. You want to go ahead and plug that into the motorcycle connector that you just found and then the OEM style switch that you earlier mounted uh, into the radio control unit, that plugs into the other end of that wiring harness as shown. If you would like for your fog lights to be able to operate while you have your high beams on, you can replace the relay with the jumper that's provided, and I'm showing how to do that here. You basically remove the relay, install this jumper in its place and that will allow your fog lights to stay on when you have on your high beams. This is how the switch looks after your radio unit is reinstalled. The two smaller connectors coming from the fog lamp are used to power the daytime running lights and the turn signals. These must be connected into the bike's turn signal wiring. The turn signal connectors are located underneath the rear view mirror housings. Release the rubber boot as I'm doing here, and then you can push the rear view mirror forward. Between the mirror housing and the shelter, you'll find the turn signal connectors. On the left side, they may be orange, and they could be a different color on the right side, maybe like a powder blue color as shown here. Go ahead and disconnect these as I've done. The next step is to run some sort of fishing tool from the mirror housing down to where the fog lights are so that we can connect our wires and pull them up. I'm using a three foot cable tie shown here. It's kind of hard to see, it's white. And uh, I basically fish that down through the shelter until it comes out where the fog lights are. Here you can see the tip of that cable tie coming out above the fog light. Using electrical tape, you can now tape these connectors to the bottom of your fishing tool, whether that's a cable tie or a coat hanger or a stiff piece of wire and then you want to pull those connectors up into the mirror housing so that they can be connected. Once you have your connectors up into the mirror housing, it's pretty obvious how they connect. You have a male connector and a female connector, and they'll go into the opposites on the turn signal harness. When connecting the DRL turn signal connectors to the factory harness, be careful to install them properly. You don't want to push the wires out of the back of the connector. Observe this photograph to see how to correctly install these connectors. Now simply repeat the process on the left side of the bike following the same steps, but make note of the different wire colors on the left side. Now is a good time to turn your motorcycle on and make sure the lights work correctly. You can also adjust the lights following the instructions in your instruction manual. Once you've tested the lights, make sure they work correctly, we're ready now to modify the front cowl. To remove the cowl inserts, we need to remove these six tabs, or actually cut through them. I'm going to use a Dremel tool, it's always good to wear protective eyewear, and I'm going to use a cutting wheel on a Dremel tool to cut through these plastic uh, tabs and once you cut all of these out, uh, you can then remove the insert. I used a small flat file to smooth out some of the rough edges. Now that I've had the opportunity to ride with these new SoCal Moto Gear rectangular fog lamps for a few days, I'm convinced these are the best ones I've ever tried. 
first of all, they look fantastic. They actually match the look of the bike. This is the fog light that Honda should have built. They've got a nice, narrow, flat beam of light. They don't scatter like a lot of uh, LEDs I've tried. And they really light up the road in between the headlights and the front of the bike. It's a super good solution. Plus, you've got the advantage of the daytime running lights and the built-in turn signals. It is a super package.